everyone. Hope you guys are having a fantastic start to your day. Wanted to hop on and talk to you guys today about the difference between being a peacemaker versus being a peacekeeper and what the Bible has to say about the difference between the two. Amen. You know, I think a lot of the time people kind of get this concept a little bit confused in their minds. They assume that a peacekeeper is the same thing as being a peacemaker and they're radically and totally different. And I want to show you the terminology that the Bible has to say about this particular topic, right? So first let's define the difference between the two. So a peacemaker is someone who is willing to resolve both outer and inner turmoil in order to establish peace with others and within themselves. Okay, so inevitably, peacemaking in our personal lives will require engaging in conflict and tension in order to sometimes resolve situations and bring it to a solid place. Okay, so that's a peacemaker. All right, a peacekeeper has a problem with the place of people pleasing in their personal lives. And it actually comes from a place of rather selfish, you know, intent behind it. They want to maintain the peace in order to avoid conflict. Um, they want to keep other people happy by steering cl clear of disagreement, which is not always the most godly response, right? So, you know, they don't want to rock the boat. They'll sacrifice their own inner peace or doing what's correct or righteous in Christ in order to maintain the facade of having peace with other people. Okay. And so that's the difference. And I want to tell you guys, there is a huge difference in what God has to say, according to the Bible about the two of them. I want to read you guys two scriptures today. And then I want to look at our example today, um, that we're going to see out of the book of Esther. All right. Um, the first scripture I want to read you guys is blessed are the peace makers for they shall be called sons of God. Amen. And so again, I want to remind you guys that peacemakers are sometimes those who will willingly and proactively go ahead of time to confront issues, right? In a loving way. I think that's the key is they got to do it in a place of love, right? You know, but there's people who will bring up the hard subjects. They are people who will not just let stuff slide under the rug if it's going to cause problems down the line. They are not people who shut down in the midst of conflict, right? They are not people who, who just try to keep the peace so that they can be appeased or liked more, right? We are called to be peacemakers in the body of Christ, not peacekeepers. Amen. The other scripture I want to read you guys is Romans 12, 18. This is also important. It says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Now, a lot of people hear this and they get this kind of confused in their mind, right? They're like, well, you know, living peaceably with all, sometimes if I draw a boundary with people or if I confront an issue, sometimes it feels like in that moment that it stirs up a lack of peace, right? And so they kind of get confused on this part, right? Here's the deal, ladies and gents. You cannot control other people's reactions or how other people's behavior is going to be, right? That's why this scripture says, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all, right? And living peaceably with someone does not mean that you don't confront the hard issues. In fact, in order to create peace, in order to create a place of truth and love, a lot of the time, it requires addressing things head on proactively. It requires not just letting things slide under the rug, right? And it's all about how you do it. You've got to do it in a place of love. I did a status this morning on Facebook for you guys. Um, that talks about in a place of conflict, there's a lot of people who will take one stance or the other, but neither is, you know, godly in and of itself. They will either stand for a place of truth or they will stand for something in a place of love devoid of truth, but neither of those is correct. We are called to represent love and truth. Amen. Especially in a place of conflict um, and just the way that we live our lives and our personal lives as a Christian. Conflict doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be disrespectful. Amen. You know, we can be respectful and disagree with each other at the same time. And we're called to that as Christians, right? We are called to not avoid the hard issues, you know, in our personal lives, just from a selfish place of, oh, I want this other person to like me. And if I bring up this hard thing, they may not like me. That's people pleasing. Ladies and gents, you know, we need to resolve stuff and be willing to confront things ahead of time. And sometimes it is a little harder, you know, confronting that stuff in the moment, right? You know, but down the line, if it creates peace, if it, you know, helps people to walk in a place of truth and harmony, if it resolves issues at the root, even if it's tough and challenging, right? 
that's better. You know, when we take a stand for God and for what he says in our personal lives and when we value his opinion above man's opinion. Amen. So our example today is one of my favorite peacemakers in the Bible. And our example today is going to come straight out of the book of Esther. And the perfect example, I think, of someone who represents a peacemaker in the Bible was Queen Esther. Now, Queen Esther had quite a hard job. I'm going to summarize a lot of this for you guys today for the sake of time. But basically what happened is there was this evil guy named Haman who kind of served as a right-hand man to the king. Okay. And he had developed this evil plot that he was going to go and murder all the Jews. Well, this would not only affect Esther, but it would affect thousands of people right? This was really not a good situation. And so Esther was informed about this thing and she had a decision to make. She could either keep the peace, quote unquote, and be quiet and do nothing and just pray and hope that everything turned out for the best. Or she could humble herself and she could confront this issue, right? After she took it to God, after she took it to a place of prayer and she could do the uncomfortable thing to her flesh, right? And she could confront the king, right? To take a stand for Christ, okay? That's what being a peacemaker looks like in our personal lives, right? And this was going to potentially cause her to have her life on the line, right? This was going to potentially cause her to lose favor with the king. This stance of her being a peacemaker rather than being a peacekeeper in this circumstance could mean that she lost everything, right? Um, and you know what? This is why the Bible tells us in our lives as a Christian that we have to count the cost. We have got to value God's opinion above man's opinion regardless, right? And so Esther went into a time of fasting. She went into a time of prayer, right? And I want you guys to notice how Esther approached this, approached this place of conflict. She was the one who brought it up. Isn't that interesting, right? A lot of times we have the misconception that if you bring up a place of conflict or if you address a problem, that you're not approaching that in a godly way. No, that is godly a lot of the time to approach something, to bring it up, right? But it has to be done from a place of love and from, from respect. A lot of times people go in with a place of self-righteousness or trying to look down on people or, you know, going in to speak instead of going in to, you know, and hearing to listen kind of a circumstance, right? Um, but Queen Esther is a beautiful example of what it looks like to be a peacemaker. Her first thing that she did when she heard about this problem is she humbled herself, right? She requested for God's help. She went into a time of fasting and prayer over this situation, right? The next thing that she did is she made up her mind that she was going to do the God thing regardless of the cost, regardless of whether or not people liked her or didn't like her in that moment. She went into a place of, I want God's will above everything else, right? So she crucified her flesh. She put that people pleasing on the altar. And she said, you know what? This is so much bigger than me. And this is so important that we address this, even if it makes people uncomfortable temporarily, right? She was a peacemaker. She was being proactive in that circumstance and in that situation. She was getting herself grounded where her identity, her confidence was in Christ more than it was in what other people thought of her. The other thing that I wanted to point out about Queen Esther is how she approached this thing in such a place of love right? And in such a place of respect. I want you guys to notice how she approached the king, even though he was 1,010% in the wrong, right? She went in with such a place of respect and she approached him strongly, right? If you look at the way that she approached the king, she approached him strongly, right? And I want to tell you guys that being a peacemaker sometimes doesn't mean that we skirt around the issues, right? You know, we can have a strong stance and be a peacemaker, right? But she went in with a place of respect, right? She went in and she did not beat around the bush when it did come time to say what was up, right? And so I think a lot of the times people too assume that in order to be someone who is godly, that they don't have any boundaries or they just let people walk all over them. No, that's not what being a peacemaker is. Peacemakers will confront hard issues, right? Peacemakers will have good boundaries, but an area where we can all learn to grow, including myself, is we've got to approach these conversations from a place of respect. Esther did that. She humbled herself, right? She, she approached this circumstance from a place of being proactive. She was the one to initiate this conflict. She was the one to bring it up, right? And because she brought it up correctly, because she put God first, right? 
thousands of Jews' lives were saved and justice came to a situation. Amen. The problem with peacekeeping in our personal lives rather than being a peacemaker is it hurts the people around us a lot of the time, you know? It hurts the people around us and it's really idolatry when we value people's opinion of us and when we are afraid to risk our own reputation because we value more about what they have to say about us rather than taking a stand for truth and rather than doing what's right. Amen. And so all of that to say, I just want to encourage you guys today, be a peacemaker, not a peacekeeper in your personal life, right? As Christians, I think a lot of times we confuse the two and people can go in kind of opposite extremes on stuff, right? But when conflict or when situations arise that are not of God, a lot of times people have one of two reactions. They will either shut down and run and try to avoid the conflict or they will, you know, agree with people even if they disagree, you know, in order to be in a place of people pleasing or they won't proactively confront issues in a place of love, you know, that need to be confronted. And so they they allow injustice to happen. They allow people's lives to be hurt. And I want to tell you guys, the longer we put stuff off in our personal lives and we refuse to confront the things that need to be confronted in our lives, the worse it gets and the more that we end up hurting people a lot of the time. Amen. We've got to learn to be God pleasers above people pleasers. And I do want to tell you, when you start implementing this, there are going to be some people who don't like you because not everyone's respectful of boundaries, right? Not everyone cares about what's right, you know, but you are not responsible for their actions and for their behavior. You are responsible for you. Remember Romans twelve eighteen said, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably for all. So don't worry about their reactions. You be obedient to what God is showing you to do. And you know, the other thing that I want to say is what other people think about you, ladies and gents, it really is none of your business. Amen. Their opinion of you belongs to God. Amen. And if we are God pleasers and if we are getting our identity and our worth in him, it shouldn't matter. That person could hate your guts. But if you know who you are in Christ, you can keep plowing forward. And the right people who are supposed to be in your life and who are respectful, they're not going anywhere. Amen. When you set boundaries with the person who is supposed to be running with you, they're not going to disappear. Right? They will stay with you, you know, especially if you're approaching them from a place of respect and love. Amen. And if they're not supposed to be running with you in the current season, give it to God. Don't demonize people, you know, don't hate on people. Surrender that person to Christ. Amen. And you focus on being a peacemaker. Amen. Hope you guys have a great day. I'll chat with you again soon.